Hello everybody and welcome to the Stadion Polio to the home of Hadjuk Split where Everton has just recorded a memorable 1-1 draw to safely go through to the group stages of the Europa League courtesy of a 3-1 aggregate scoreline. Ian Snowden was alongside me for the game, Ian Snowden's alongside me now. Talking points are plenty but let's start with Gilfie's goal. Wow, doesn't come any better than that. Um, at the time we needed a very quick reaction after half time, 13 seconds, wow, <laughs> but the manner in which he scored the goal was incredible. It's one of the best goals I've seen live, without a shadow of a doubt. And uh, I think it's one of the best goals he'll ever score. It was just what we needed, as you say. It knocked the stuffing out of them, didn't it? Yeah, we were certainly under pressure. They scored after 39 minutes. They'd have gone in at half-time, really cock a hoop. We, we'd have been disappointed. Uh, Ronald Koeman's team talk would have been, come on, we've got to be sound defensively. But it all changed after 13 seconds of that second half. It was quite an incredible goal. And uh, our reaction, uh, was, was was fantastic. It was an incredible goal that tapped off a superb night for Everton Football Club. Let's have a look at some of our exclusive behind the scenes footage here in Croatia and of course the highlights of the game. Helped on by uh, Sigurdsson for Calvert-Lewin. Calvert-Lewin's pulled back. A rise for Sigurdsson. Good effort. Just wide. Against Oglu's cross. Saeed goes for the spectacular. It falls for Erseg and that's a save from Pickford. That was on target all right and Jordan Pickford good enough to make the save. Hamza. Radosevic, a thunderbolt of a shot. Joseph Radosevic has battered that home. Jordan Pickford was well beaten in the end. So what an important 45 minutes of football this is for Everton, following that late strike at the end of the first half. Everton have made a change and Everton are right back in it. What about that from distance? My word. That is incredible. Gilfie Ziggerton, what a way to get Everton back in this. That is something special on your full Everton debut seconds after the restart have a look at this wow 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 here's Aaron Lennon who came on at half time Aaron Lennon buzzing into the penalty air for Rooney Everton almost getting a second in a double quick time now Saeed another Savic Oh, penalty awarded, Erseg went down and immediately looked to the referee who was very, very quick to point to the spot. Jordan Pickford to try and save, and he has brilliantly! Jordan Pickford, Everton's hero now, went the right way and made the stop. Keane's ball forward, releases Rooney, Rooney's on, threw on the goalkeeper, Rooney... Beaten away by Stipica. Chance to really seal it there for Everton. Defenders did get back. Rooney's shot pushed away by the Croatian keeper. It's not a word about Jordan Pickford's penalty save. Yeah, it, it's fantastic. Any penalty save is a great penalty save, especially when it's by the Everton keeper. Um, it was a terrific goal that beat him. Uh, there's no question about it. He moved in the air, but uh, the penalty save, it come at a crucial time. We got back into the game one all. We could have gone 2-1 down, the crowd would have been up again. Uh, they, they started pressing forward as well, so I think it's a fantastic uh, fantastic save, no matter if it's a good penalty or not. 
and uh, you could tell by the reaction of one more Bezic and Williams especially they went to check his hand but Jordan wanted to concentrate he said look get on with the game I've saved it we're still drawing one apiece. The boy Erteg wanted to take the penalty. Ahmed Saeed wanted to take the penalty and did do, and the crowd turned on him, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, I think that I think that was good for us as well, that there was a bit of an argument in that 18-yard box, who were going to take the penalty? And you could see that uh, there were confusion. Three or four players were in there. It got set, it got sorted in the end. Unfortunately, well, unfortunately for them, great for us that he missed the penalty and then the crowd turned on him as well, giving him a little bit of stick, which made it uneasy for him. But yeah, don't worry about them, it's all about Everton. There's been some unsavoury incidents involving the Hadjuk split supporters over here in Croatia, and certainly we saw what they're capable of back at Goodison Park, but the atmosphere they created was immense, wasn't it? It was a terrific atmosphere for a game of football. It's one of the best I've ever heard. I'd have loved to have been part of that, I'd love to have played in that, and uh, it was quite incredible, just around the ground. Yeah, there, there was some naughty scenes at Goodison and there's some unsavoury behaviour before the game uh, in the town centre, but here, yeah, when we was in this ground, this, this ground was bouncing, absolute, and a credit to our fans as well. You could hear them as mm. well uh, when it went pretty quiet. So uh, I just thought, if you're going to play in Europe, what, a, what an atmosphere, what a stadium to play to. And we were standing pit side just a little bit further along this, uh, this disused running track when the three goalkeepers came out to warm up. The booing and the hissing, even though it was about 50 minutes before the kickoff, was so loud. But Jordan Pickford was loving it, wasn't he? Loved it? it. He loved it. He's a young lad, he's 23 year old. And you'd think that, would he be nervous? He came out, well, him uh, and the other two keepers came out, and you're right, they got booed, they got hissed. Jordan had the biggest smile on his face. He thought, bring this on. This is what I want. I love all this. <laughs> and very quickly, we're now guaranteed at least six more games in Europe, which was what we wanted. This is what Everton's all about. This is We're a massive club. We need to be in Europe year in, year out, winning trophies. Everton are a big club and deserve to be in Europe. Well, what does £45 million get for you these days? I'll tell you what it gets you, an absolute wonder goal in the Europa League. Let's hear from our goal scorer, Gilfie Sigurdsson. Personally, it was fantastic to score my first goal for the club um, in a fantastic stadium as well and a really good atmosphere, so it was nice for me, but, but we're going home happy, that's the main thing. What was in your mind when the ball was kind of landing at your feet in that position? Did you really think you were going to score from there? I thought probably no, but um, I managed to get a touch on the ball when the ball was sitting up quite nicely, it was in the air. And I thought to myself, the keeper is probably not on his line because they just had position of the ball. So um, I just went for it. Thankfully, I uh, hit the target and, and he just managed to beat the keeper. You're an experienced player, but were there any nerves playing tonight and making your first start for Everton? Uh, no, I was fully focused on how tough this game was going to be um, and just making sure I was getting through the game fitness-wise because um, it's my first start this, this pre-season, uh, first 90 minutes. So I'm a bit tired, I'm not going to lie. but. Um, no, I enjoyed it really much, so um, fans were fantastic, both home and away fans. Uh, so it was a good night for me personally and, and for the team as well. What a way for Gilfie to get off the mark. We've already mentioned him and Jordan Pickford, but you made Leighton Baines your man of the match, not? I thought he was quality all evening, never give a ball away. When it got to the last 10 minutes as well, the experienced players in our team, the Baines, the mm. Williams, Sigurdsson, Wayne Rooney, they kept the ball fantastically well. That's what you've got to do in Europe when you're winning the game, see the clock down, but keep the ball. But we didn't keep it just for the sake. We switched play from left to right, right to left. We created still a couple of chances as well, but I thought the mannerisms that the, the last 10 minutes that they saw that game out was fantastic. We just took the sting out of the hostility, didn't we? Yeah, we did because they were still putting a little bit of pressure on. Uh, they could have said, get a goal in the last 10 minutes. It could have been a bit uneasy, but we didn't allow that. And I looked at uh, the boss, Ronald Koeman, a couple of times and he were applauding his players because they saw the game out, they managed the game uh, fantastically well. And that's what you've got to do in Europe. And uh, we've got, as you said, we've got six games to go and if we play like that, we're going to be hard to beat. We were well marshalled at the back, weren't we? And Ashley Williams was immense at times. Tonight. Yeah, he gave a penalty away. I've not really seen it yet again, but uh, some are saying it wasn't a penalty, some say it was. Uh, but, no criticism of Ashley Williams because I, you're right, I thought he was immense. I've watched him for Swansea on many occasions, watched him now for Everton. I, I think that one of, one of his best performances mm. in an Everton shirt tonight. Six games of the season gone, still unbeaten? Yeah, it's great. It's great. We're looking sound defensively. 
Wayne Rooney's enjoying his football. We've seen an unbelievable goal from our £45 million record signing. And uh, I'm, me and you have got a smile on his face. <laughs> All Evertonians at the minute have got a smile on their face. And let long may it continue. Great time to be an Evertonian, oh. isn't it? Hey, it's always a good time to be an Evertonian. <laughs> Don't be pinching the chairman's <laughs> lines. That's just about it for part one of this week's Everton show. Don't go too far away from your TV screen. Coming up in part two, we'll hear from Phil Jagielka and Jordan Pickford. Hello everybody and welcome to part two of this week's Everton show. As you can see, we've got a rather more picturesque backdrop for this section of the programme. Ian Snowden alongside me. We've been in worse places, haven't we? <laughs> absolutely beautiful, isn't it? It's sun shining, hotel's been absolutely fantastic. Great. Well, a busy week for Everton started very much on the right note with a well-earned 1-1 draw against Manchester City at the Etihad Stadium on Monday night. Here's the post-match reaction from that one. Maybe before the match you will shine for one point, but after half-time, uh, 11 against 10, I think uh, we lost a little bit the control. Uh, I think we, we played too fast the long ball instead of uh, play short and keep the ball and wait. But I, I think that the, the, the team worked really hard. We had the, the game plan, uh, we did perfect in the first half and also in the second half. One unlucky moment uh, by Mason, the header, straight to, uh, I think it was Sterling, I think, uh, and he scored a 1 1. But uh, okay, finally, I think maybe it's, uh, it's a good point and uh, look, at, uh, look at positive. We're obviously disappointed not to win the game, but uh, when you come to a place like this, um, obviously they're a very good team. So if you look at from the start of the game, you probably will have looked at a point as a, as a good point. But obviously, uh, then being down to 10 men for quite a long period, it's uh, a little bit disappointing. But I don't think we can be uh, too disheartened um, to come away from it with a point. I thought Mason uh, and Dom were fantastic tonight, um, really showed what they can do. Dom was an outlet in behind all night long and uh, caused them a lot of trouble, so I think it was a great night uh, in that sense for them. Um, and yeah, they should be uh, really proud of their performance. It was a terrific result, Snobs, and a terrific performance. Who in particular caught your eye for Everton? Nobody really, for me, stood out. I just thought collectively, Daz, we were outstanding. At the back, very, very solid. Our skipper, I thought, organised us very, very well. I thought the midfield too worked extremely hard and if I were to pick anybody out in particular, I'd go for Dominic Calvert-Lewin, I thought he, his role up there on his own, he's a tough, it's a tough ask for a young lad to do, especially against the experience yeah. and the quality that Man City have got at the back. So for me, if I had to pick anybody out, I thought Dominic was outstanding. He led the line with such maturity, didn't he? He's 20 year old, the boy. He's been playing right hand side, right wing back, to play his proper role, centre forward, which he is, I thought um, he, he, he run the channels well, he worked hard, he made Man City's defenders work hard and that's what you want, that's what his teammates were looking for, an outlet ball and Dominic were there every time that anybody picked the ball up. And I know as a proud Yorkshireman, you'll be delighted with the stat that told us after the game that we had eight English players in the side. I think that's fantastic, I really do and it's a, it's a blend of youth and experience as well, you've got Leighton Baines, Jaggy Elka etc but then you've got, you've got Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Uh, we, we, with abundance of talent, we really have, and I think it's great that the club are, are encouraging that as well, youngsters to be in the team. Not many teams will go to Manchester City and get a draw this season. They're a quality team, Let, let's get right. I think anybody who finishes above Man City this season will win the league. Mm. Well, we've got a new feature for you this season on the Everton Show. We call it My Firsts. We started off a couple of weeks ago with Davy Class, and this week it's the turn of Jordan Pickford. Track myself to an Audi A3 when I, when I pass my test, so I have a decent car and always good memories as well. Yeah, uh, always, I went to watch my brother I don't know if my brother was training or playing and, and there was a team playing on the side and uh, just joined in and goal. they needed to keep the side. Got thrown in the deep round, went in goal and uh, the team was washing envelopes from back where I'm from. First holiday, I remember I think it was when mum and dad got married in the uh, Dominican Republic and 
I hate that I was only two or three at the time, I was crying all day. I think there's always two, Peter Schmeichel obviously, when the, um, you're growing up and watching the ITV games and he was just in his element, element at the time and I but being a Sunderland fan, it's got Tommy Sorrell from when he saved his pen against Shearer, I think we will win that year. Well, last couple of years with 21s, it was uh, Dunks. Don't want more from Sunderland. We had, we had a good, good crack playing Roy McIlroy and that on the Xbox, and the, I would batter him as well. So, Kevin Ball used to, he used to always. It always gives a few uh, relatives, but it was always for the best. It wasn't. It was always to make me the better person, better goalkeeper. So it was worth it in the end. It's not there's a little bit of a gamble, I suppose, in every transfer that any football club makes. But for me, Jordan Pifford looks as close as being nailed on as you can get. I'm excited to see him in an Everton shirt because I think he's going to be our keeper for many, many years to come. I think he breeds confidence to the back four. Um, the way he comes and punches balls when he can't come and catch them. His kicking ability is second to none and then shot stopping. Every keeper can shot stop, there's no question about that. But he does it in a particular way that, I, 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 honestly, I think We've, we've made some great signings, we really have, but I'm, I'm excited by this boy. Jordan seems to make saves with contempt, doesn't he? He seems to just parry it and think, is that all you've got? Yeah, is that the best you've got? There's many, many situations where they've had to strike on goal, and you're right, he just parries them down and then just collects <laughs> it. But um, just, just looking at his mannerisms around Finch Farm as well, yeah. I've talked to Jimmy Martin and they said, what a lovely kid he is, what a night, and he's settled in so, so quickly for a young lad, just come from Sunderland, He's got a big transfer fee on his, on his head, but it doesn't seem to affect him at all. He's, he's full of confidence, the boy. Talking of Sunderland, your brother, of course, is one of the coaches at Sunderland with Simon Grayson. So, yourself and Glenn, have you spoken about the uh, Carabao Cup draw yet? Not yet. I will be ringing him, definitely, uh, in the near future. I think they'll be excited, mm. uh, him and Simon Grayson, and obviously the players that have played for Everton who are now at Sunderland. There's, uh, there's quite a few of them as well. So. Uh, yeah, I'll be speaking to Glenn. He'll be asking me what formation we're playing, and that's when brotherly love comes out of the way. He will get no information off me whatsoever. But he won't give you the Sunderland team either, will Certainly he? Certainly not, no. He won't, but it's a, it's a great draw for both yeah. clubs. It's a competition that we want to go forward in. It's amazing that we've never really pulled up any trees in this competition. Yeah, because it's a long time since we won silverware. So people devalue this competition. We don't. We want to win this competition. We want a trophy for our fans. Our fans want a trip to Wembley. Our fans want to see the captain of Everton Football Club lifting a trophy. So do I, so do you, so do everybody. So we've got to take this really, really serious. The manager will take it serious. Mm. He wants to win this competition. It's a busy week football-wise. Manchester City, Hadjuk Split and Chelsea. It's also going to be a busy week or so off the field as well because the transfer window slams shut next week and uh, there may be one or two more faces coming in. Yeah, there'll be a lot of clubs thinking, I wish it would shut tomorrow, but not for Everton. I think we've, we've still got a little bit of business to do. I'm sure the manager uh, and Steve Walsh have got their eyes on one or two players. We're hoping to bring in and strengthen yet again. So, right, watch this space. I don't think we've done yet. No, neither do I. Well, the fixtures are coming thick and fast. Manchester City, high juck split. And then on Sunday afternoon, we go to Stamford Bridge to take on no less than the champions, Chelsea. This is Phil Jagielka's take on that one. I think watching uh, obviously the game at Spurs, it was always going to be a totally different game to the one at Burnley. Uh, after what had happened at Burnley and the fact is that obviously there's a bit of a rivalry between Spurs and uh, Chelsea at the moment. So I think they, they probably would have had a little bit of a rude awakening, uh, first home game of the season. And I'm sure they'll be desperate not, not for that to happen again. But I'm sure when, when we come to do our little bit of research, probably uh, Friday or Saturday, uh, we'll look for their weaknesses and hopefully uh, find some in, in the uh, analysis. Chelsea, Spurs, Man United, as you say, you've got to play them all at some stage, but I mean, that's a really tough run, isn't it? Yeah, it was, it was, it was almost like you, you laughed at yourself when, when they came out, but you know, this is what you want to do, these are the games you want to play in. Uh, to get you know, a three away games of Man City, uh, had it split in Croatia, then Chelsea, it's going to be a, a lot of travelling. But uh, say when the, when the, what I see is the best league in the world, we want to play in Europe, so this is, this is the job. You know, the, the manager and the players need to step up to and 
and make sure we don't let ourselves down. This week of fixture snods couldn't be tougher if we planned it ourselves. Chelsea at the weekend at Stamford Bridge. <sighs> they don't come more difficult, do they? We've had Man City, we've had this European game, and now we've got Chelsea, the champions. But I just feel there's a little bit of unrest in the Chelsea, mm. Chelsea camp over the Costa situation, Daz. Um, who would have said they'd have got beat? Nobody in football would have said they'd have got beat on the opening day against Burnley at home. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I think we've got the squad, we've got the ability in the squad definitely to, uh, to go to Chelsea and get all three points. I suppose if you're just analysing it basically, if we can get a draw at Manchester City, we can get a result at Stamford Bridge. Yeah, we can, without, without a shadow of a doubt. We, as I said, we've got some quality players. I'm sure the squad rotation will work as well. Uh, but let's not get it wrong, Chelsea are a quality team. They're not champions for nothing. They've got some great talent, they've got some great players, but we've got to go there. We're positive. We've had a positive start to the season. We've got to go there with optimism. Just very briefly, it would set us up beautifully for an international break with a win there, wouldn't oh, it? Oh, it'd be fantastic. It'll send all the Evertonians home up here <laughs> and Ronald Koeman and all his players. <laughs> Fingers crossed at Stamford Bridge. We're certainly due a win there, aren't we? And that's just about it for this week's Everton show. Please do join us in seven days' time for another Everton show. It won't be quite as nice as this, but join us anyway. You got the sun cream? No, I've left it in the hotel, I think. I'll go and get it. All right. <laughs>